Harris and Clabol turned and began shooting west in the direction of five students sitting on the grassy hillside adjacent to the steps and opposite the west entrance of the school. 32, 15-year-old Michael Johnson was hit in the face, leg and arm, but ran and escaped. 16-year-old Mark Taylor was shot in the chest, arms and leg and fell to the ground, where he feigned death. The other three escaped uninjured. 28. Klebold walked down the steps toward the cafeteria. He shot Kirkland in the face, critically wounding him. Daniel Rorabaugh and Sean Graves had descended the staircase when Klebold and Harris's attention was diverted by the students on the grass, Graves had crawled into the doorway of the cafeteria's west entrance and collapsed. Klebold shot Rorabaugh through the upper left chest at close range, killing him and then stepped over the injured Sean Graves to enter the cafeteria. Officials speculated that Klebold went to the cafeteria to check on the propane bombs. Harris shot down the steps at several students sitting near the cafeteria's entrance, severely wounding and partially paralyzing 17-year-old Anne-Marie Hockhalter 33, as she tried to flee. Klebold came out of the cafeteria and went back up the stairs to join Harris. They shot toward students standing close to a soccer field, but did not hit anyone. They walked toward the west entrance, throwing pipe bombs, very few of which detonated. Meanwhile inside the school, Patty Nielsen, a teacher, had noticed the commotion and walked toward the west entrance with a 16-year-old student, Brian Anderson. She had intended to walk outside to tell the two students to knock it off, 34, thinking Klebold and Harris were either filming a video or pulling a student prank. As Anderson opened the first set of double doors, Harris and Klebold shot out the windows, injuring him with flying glass and hitting Nielsen in the shoulder with shrapnel. Nielsen stood and ran back down the hall into the library, alerting the students inside to the danger and telling them to get under desks and keep silent. She dialed 911 and hid under the library's administrative counter. 8. Anderson remained behind, caught between the exterior and interior doors. Police response, 11.22 a.m. At 11.22, the custodian called Deputy Neil Gardner on the school radio, requesting assistance in the senior parking lot. The only paved route took him around the school to the east and south on Pierce Street, where, at 11.23 he heard on his police radio that a female was down, struck by a car, he assumed. He turned on his lights and siren. While exiting his patrol car in the senior lot at 11.24, he heard another call on the school radio, Neil, there's a shooter in the school. 27, Harris, at the west entrance, immediately fired his rifle at Gardner, who was 60 yards away. 27, Gardner returned fire with his service pistol. 35, he was not wearing his prescription eyeglasses and was unable to hit the shooters. Thus, five minutes after the shooting started, and two minutes after the first radio call, Gardner was engaged in a gunfight with the student shooters. There were already two dead and ten wounded. Harris fired ten shots and Gardner fired four, before Harris stuck back into the building. No one was hit. Gardner reported on his police radio, shots in the building. I need someone in the south lot with me. The gunfight distracted Harris and Klebold from the injured Brian Anderson. 8. Anderson escaped to the library and hid inside an open staff break room. Back in the school, the duo moved along the main north hallway, throwing pipe bombs and shooting at anyone they encountered. They shot Stephanie Munson in the ankle, although she was able to walk out of the school. The pair shot out the windows to the east entrance of the school. After proceeding through the hall several times and shooting Ward, and missing, any students they saw. Harris and Klebold went toward the west entrance and turned into the library hallway. Deputy Paul Smoker, a motorcycle patrolman for the Jefferson County Sheriff's Office, was writing a traffic ticket north of the school when the female down call came in at 11.23. 
Taking the shortest route, he drove his motorcycle over grass between the athletic fields and headed toward the west entrance. When he saw Deputy Scott Taberski following him in a patrol car, he abandoned his motorcycle for the safety of the car. The two deputies had begun to rescue two wounded students near the ball fields when another gunfight broke out at 11.26, between Harris, back at the west entrance, and Gardner, still in the parking lot. Deputy Smoker returned fire from the hilltop, and Harris retreated. Again, no one was hit. 